Hi, it's Jennifer Hollick with the World War II Research and Writing Center and Finding the Answers Journey. I'm in Rotterdam this weekend and sitting in a gorgeous park. It's kind of like their Central Park. And I wanted to talk a little bit about energy and the kinds of words that we're using, whether it's in our day-to-day -day conversations or a lot of what we're talking about on social media. And this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with family history or military history, but it has a lot to do with what we're creating on the planet, what we're creating in our lives and our communities and what kind of energy we're kind of spreading around. And I've noticed, I don't get into political commentary on Facebook. I don't share that kind of stuff. I don't want to go into the negative dark energy of most of that. Um, so I deal with all of that in my own way. But what I've noticed recently, um, especially with the current situation in the US, is a lot of people in social media are using words like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed that somebody in our government did whatever, or I feel so ashamed, or I feel guilty for. And I sit back and look at the energy of that, and it's kind of like, well, why are you taking on the energy and the um, responsibility of what someone else did by using those words. And I don't think a lot of people think about what some of the words they use actually mean, and we all do this. Um, but I think if we want to stop creating so much fear and negativity in the world, maybe we need to look at the language that we're using. Now, I've, I've taken a lot of classes through Access Consciousness um, there's a lot of kids playing here now under these giant trees across this pond. So it's a little bit noisy, sorry. Um, but through a lot of the classes I've taken with Access Consciousness, one thing they stress is looking at the definitions of words. And they use an 1828 dictionary to kind of go back to what the words originally meant. And, you know, one of their big things um, that they talk about is the word want. And want originally meant to lack. So when you say I want something, it means you're lacking something. And if you keep saying I want something, then it contributes to the energy of, well, I still don't have it. But then they talk about, well, I would I choose to have this. And then that um, changes the energy and brings something else in. So I try to think about that a lot. And I'm not perfect. And I haven't removed the word want from my vocabulary. But I try to be conscious of what some of these words mean that I use on a regular basis. And I really would ask you to question what kinds of words are you using when you post on social media? What kinds of words are you using in conversations with people? And are they contributing to raising the vibration of the planet and changing things? Or are they contributing to more fear, more confusion, more uncertainty, lowering the vibration and feeding into, you know, what's not possible? And I'm a big believer, except in those moments where I get stuck in something of my own, where I think it's not possible. But on the whole, I try to look at, you know, what's possible? What choice do I have here? What can I do to change this if I don't like it? And what would happen in our world if more of us chose that? So just something for you to consider today. And if you're interested in learning more about the energy work that I do or the facilitation or having a conversation about any of this, um, you can go to findingtheanswersjourney.com and I have some facilitation information under services and a lot of different articles with some videos, some without videos that will give you more to think about. And, you know, if we each just change one thing, what else is possible to creating a world we'd all really like to live in? So if you're interested in learning more, Finding the Answers Journey dot com. Bye.